Well, welcome once again uh, to the Bible study here at uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm glad you're joining me today as we continue uh, to study God's living and abiding word uh, together. And uh, last week we focused on 2 Timothy and, and uh, Paul's reminder to Timothy how he's been trained uh, in the faith to be a evangelist and have been trained through God's word, which has uh, certain results to it. And uh, Paul's charge to Timothy was, you know, be sober-minded, continue to be patient, uh, continue to do the work that's entrusted to you. Um, and that, of course, is remaining faithful uh, to God's word and God's word alone. Uh, today we continue Paul's exhortation and encouragement today. And this is uh, Fighting the Good Fight, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and selected verses. Uh, so before we uh, start our Bible study today, let's uh, have a word of prayer. And this is for faithfulness under the cross. Merciful Christ, you were faithful to save us unto death. By your act, strengthen our hearts that we too might demonstrate steadfast fidelity to you and your word until we follow the saints who have gone before us. Preserve us in times of doubt and unbelief, and bring us safely home to your kingdom that lasts forever. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You know, as we uh, look at the screen, uh, it might be rather daunting uh, to start with. You know, fight the good fight. Fought the good fight. I mean, who uh, thinks about their Christian life uh, being an evangelist, uh, carry the carry on your task, as Paul says to Timothy, as an evangelist, as a as a Christian is one in which uh, there is there is a battle uh, that's taking place. There's fighting uh, that's going on. Most people uh, want peace. They don't want to have to to think about fighting and and all that uh, uh, takes place uh, within it. And yet we're going to be reminded today that we are in a battle. We are in a battle uh, that takes place each and every day, um, and how that battle is remedied today, so we can, you know, have confidence as we go go on to fight and and look forward uh, to the day when all fighting ceases. Um, but uh, before we get to that, and we'll spend more time with this uh, today. Uh, so Second Timothy four six through eight, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. Remember, Paul is writing to Timothy his last words here while he is in prison, um, and he knows his death is imminent. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also who have loved his appearing. So Paul charged Timothy, we had last week's text, be sober-minded, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Um, you know, once you've been trained and, and uh, know God's word, you have to, you know, carry it out. And that means there's going to be opposition, there's going to be challenges. And these are ways to, to carry it out despite those challenges. And uh, now Paul shifts the focus to himself. The Greek starts with ego, uh, providing emphasis. It says, as for me. In 52 Greek words, Paul wrote a dramatic valedictory displaying his attitude toward his intimate death and toward his life of service as an apostle. So, drink offerings are poured out around the temple's altar of sacrifice, the last act of the sacrificial ceremony. Paul saw his whole life of apostolic ministry as a willing sacrifice ending with the drink offering of his death. The Greek word for departure pictures loosening tent ropes or a ship's mooring Lines. Paul was moving on to another destination. He described his life and ministry in the analogy of the athletic games. At Gona, fight referred to the full exertion that an event required over its entire performance. Paul was saying that he had not only begun, but he had also persisted and finished the race. He had kept the faith. The Greek phrase used when an athlete performed completely within the rules of the contest. So Paul was telling Timothy that a disciple and apostle of Jesus he had run the whole way to the finish line. Now he was looking ahead to the victory wreath of righteousness, graciously awarded by the righteous judge to those who successfully complete the contest. 
finish the race and keep and keep the faith. Um, what does Paul also? Uh, what does Paul's also to all who have loved his appearing uh, say to us? And as we look at this, um, a war to me, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So as Paul was uh, running the race as a Christian, as a believer, since um, he was claimed by Christ on the road to Damascus by faith, and when we became a people of faith at our baptism, claimed by God there, uh, washed clean of our sins, and uh, given faith to believe in Christ, who washes away our sins by his death and resurrection, uh, the race began for us right there. And the race doesn't end until God determines its end date. And so that can be, a, well, in a short period of time in relationship to our life here, it can be a long time. You know, my grandmother's 103. Some uh, begin the race very early on and end the race very early on uh, in their life. But regardless of where your race begins and where it ends, uh, we are to be people of faith, people who rely on the Lord no matter what. And this is challenged by our sinful nature, it's challenged by our sinful world, it's challenged by the devil, who want us to, well, not believe in God, uh, to not keep our eyes fixed on him, and therefore fixed on the finish line. Um, but we know that there is a finish line, and that finish line has been accomplished not by our works, but by what Jesus did. Jesus won the race for us. We cannot beat Satan. You know, we cannot beat the sinful world. We cannot beat our sinful nature, but Jesus did. He liberated us. He fought the good fight through his death and resurrection, and he has given us this victory, and it's in victory that we fight, and it's in victory that we, you know, continue to live out our lives every day, knowing that our life here is finite, but what Christ has given to us is eternal, and through Christ's righteousness given to us, through his forgiveness by faith, we, we run the race with perseverance. We run the race with hope. We run the race even with joy, knowing that even in the midst of our sufferings and challenges, heaven awaits us. And so Paul was willing and ready, and he's instructing Timothy as well, and you and me, that it's okay if our life is poured out as a drink offering, um, if we sacrifice our life here because of what still is to come, our eternity with the Lord. For Paul, it was persecution in prison. For, for some, it may not be that our death is related to a, a direct correlation with our sharing of the faith, but death will come because we're all sinners, and it's part of the judgment of sin. But we know that in Christ we will uh, rise uh, to everlasting life when Christ returns. So, all who have loved his appearing, all who believe in Jesus, who is the righteous judge, will be awarded, awarded uh, the end goal that God has for us, to live with him in heaven forever. And Paul looked forward to this. We should look forward to this. You fight the good fight. You know you're in a, in a race, in a battle continually, but you, you persevere. God with you, God for you, and uh, it all works out uh, when we remain in faith and in Christ's forgiveness, a uh, one for us. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, this is you know, so important and encouraging for us today because you know, as we carry out our faith journey, as we're running the race, there are those who are going to be running the race with us, and then they're going uh, not to be running the race uh, with us. Uh, they may desert God and therefore desert us, but God is always in us and with us, 
as we are reminded of God's word. That's why all God's word um, is breathed out by God and useful uh, for our lives, useful for Paul, uh, for the encouragement and strength that he needed. So the second section of this uh, pericope is part of the personal instructions with which Paul closed his letter. He urged Timothy to get Mark and to come to him to comfort and support him in his last days. Only Luke was with him. He warned against Alexander, who had done, uh, who had done him great harm, opposed his message, and perhaps accused him in court. Why had not one stood by Paul as he made his defense at his first hearing? Of whom does this remind you? Well, when Paul is facing this opposition and the result of being a believer and a proclaimer of the gospel and knowing that it means imprisonment and death, many will fall away. Many will be scattered uh, when this uh, reality uh, hits home to them. You know, it all sounds so good that even I will die with you. And this reference back to Jesus um, with Simon Peter um, at the night when he was betrayed. Simon Peter, they'll all fall away from you, not me. But Jesus said, all will fall away from me. And Jesus was alone. And no one stood up uh, in defense of, of him and his ministry. Yes, John was there in the in the um, in his hearing and Simon Peter's outside warming himself then denying that he even knew Jesus but no one was there to, to rescue him from that hour no one was there really to affirm him and to encourage him um, in his ministry and, and to bring this defense and Paul is saying the same may happen to you and to me that when we're looking for that you know people to come and rally around us that they may not, but God is with us. And God has promised, never will I leave you, and never will I forsake you. So as we remain in God's word, the Holy Spirit is you know, reminding us, uh, God with us and God for us. It goes back to our Elder Mel uh, message in our study in Romans chapter 8. And this is uh, helpful for us and for all people. So the Lord has been true to his promise to stand beside those who proclaimed his word. Uh, because of Jesus' presence with him, Paul was able to proclaim the good news clearly for all present to hear. And this is what we are reminded, that Jesus um, is the one who gives us the confidence. Jesus is the one who gives us the ability uh, to proclaim and to remain steadfast. Those all others uh, may, may, may fail, fall away from us. How did Paul deal differently with his disappointment over his friends leaving him uh, to stand alone with his anger toward Alexander? Um, he dealt differently with it uh, because he knew that the Lord was with him. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his kingdom. Um, people can say all sorts of accusations against us, but ultimately the truth does prevail. And Paul was confident that his ministry, as he says here, proclaimed, uh, and all the Gentiles might hear it. His message might be fully proclaimed, that he accomplished the task that he was given uh, to be able uh, to share the gospel. He felt like he fulfilled his call. And so he had really, he was at peace. Um, even if others would, again, accuse him or try to diminish his ministry, he fought the good fight. He finished the race. He went out and proclaimed uh, to the Gentiles the message of, of the gospel. And he was saved. And he was saved. He was vindicated uh, through Jesus, who counted him guiltless uh, before all those who accused him because Paul lived in Christ's forgiveness. And Paul could stand confidently, even at trial, and say, what can man do to me? I have carried out the, the task that I have been given, the call that I have uh, received. Um, so as we think about you know this life that we have, and Paul talking about being an evangelist, Timothy being an evangelist, uh, whether we're a called worker like I am, or whether in the public setting, or whether we're out carrying our ministry out um, of the gospel as laity, you know God is with us. And it's, it's hard to hear that 
you know, sometimes we're going to go alone in terms of support of others around us. But we know that the Lord is with us and that our work in the Lord is not in vain. You know, God accomplishes the purpose for which he, he will do it. And Paul was confident of this. Timothy was confident of this. And we see the fruits of the work of which the Holy Spirit worked in their lives. You and I uh, have received this fruit as we study God's word and the epistles that Paul wrote, the work of Timothy and Paul, and, and the joy of so many who heard the gospel and believed and were saved. So as we think about what Paul is talking about in Timothy, it's a, it's a wonderful read for us um, just to exhort us to be faithful to God's word, exhort us to be faithful even unto death, to fight the good fight, which is being uh, strong in God's word and his love and forgiveness, uh, to preach the word, to teach the word in season and out of season, just to be ready to give the reason for the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. And when our journey comes, to know that by faith, through God's grace, in Jesus alone, that we are saved. So continue to fight the good fight. Uh, continue to run the race that God has given you to run. Uh, run with endurance, run with patience, run with confidence uh, that God is with you. And uh, we look forward to the day when our race ends. And we receive the crown of righteousness as uh, Paul received as well. Uh, for all those who believe in Jesus and have longed for his appearing. Well, thanks again for joining me today as we continue our service to the Lord as he has served us first. And I look forward to our uh, Bible study again uh, next week as we prepare for Reformation and All Saints. So once again, God bless your day.